My name is Mark Trebeji and I'm president of OpenGate Data Systems. We are exhibiting here at AFCOM and we are showing a hot air containment system. Hot air systems are a capability of taking the heat from the uh, IT load and giving it a direct path back to the cooling units. By doing this, you separate the hot waste heat from the cool supply air. You can then reduce your volume of delivery of air and also raise your supply air temperature. If you look up here, this is our redundant hot air containment system. This system is capable of fitting on any equipment rack. We provide a template, you can give it to your rack manufacturer, and what they will do is they will put a hole in that cabinet to match this chassis. These modules are completely redundant. They both operate at the same capacity. If something happens to one of the modules, it takes about 15 seconds to communicate, realize that the other module is missing, and we go into a system alarm. If we look at the software, as soon as the software refreshes, we'll see that one of the modules have dropped out. When both modules are operating normally, we show a green graph. When one of the modules drops out, which we pulled out the B module, you can see it goes to zero, the other module will take over and start to pick up the load of the air from the servers. Now, this, as you can see here, it is refreshed, and that module has dropped out, and as this starts to slide over, and this graph comes over, you will see that that has dropped out and then the yellow one or the uh, A fan has picked up. We're reporting load of the system and reporting percent capacity of the total available CFM. So this system is capable of about 1200 CFM. You could use it for up to 10 kilowatts. So it's scalable zero to 10 kilowatts because we're using a pressure sensor to detect whether or not we're pulling enough air out to match the server load. If the servers are putting in more air, we speed up to make sure that we don't create a positive pressure. We don't also create a negative pressure either. We maintain a zero differential pressure at all times. That's why we're able to report the rack capacity in CFM and percent capacity of the total available CFM. This module can be replaced with a 20 kilowatt module. So we can do zero to 10 kilowatts with this system or if we decide that we want to go over 10 kilowatts, we then pull these modules out, slide these modules in. They would immediately recognize that they're 20 kilowatt modules. This would update, and this would say EC20. This would then say available CFM of about 2,000. And then your load would stay the same, because you haven't changed your equipment in the cabinet. But then this percent of total capacity obviously would come down at that point. What we're going to do now is restore that first cartridge. So that first cartridge, if you want to come around and look at this, because only one cartridge is running right now, it had to increase its capacity to over 80%. And that's our lower alarm for capacity. So you can see we've got a capacity alarm that's flashing. When this goes over 90% capacity, these characters will turn red, and this will go into a red alarm, and you can send an escalation to a different email, or you can use SMMP traps to work with your existing building management or IT management software. We're going to restore this cartridge now. It goes through a self-check. It checks all its functions. It checks its display features, colors. It's looking at the different alarms. Now this is going to start to communicate, and the system alarm is going to clear. The system alarm has cleared because now they realize they're both acting normally, but we still have a capacity alarm. These will now start to reduce the capacity to match the load again. So this fan is speeding up. So they're always balancing together. When one of the modules gets lost, then the other one takes over. We also look at return temperature. Return temperature is important because in an environment where you're working with uh, chilled water units, the higher your return temperature, the more efficient your cooling is going to be. You also can get some gains on chiller efficiency by doing that as well. So we look at return temperature here with an internal sensor. We can then compare that return temperature to the return temperature at the crack unit. And if they aren't in sync, we know we've got some leaks in the system and we can go then and detect and see what's going on refreshes every 30 seconds so you can force a refresh. We also can hook up to three temperature sensors. We've got, uh, we've got three installed right now. We can collapse or expand each of these looking at 
looking at each uh, each graph, we can set the alarms on these, whatever we want them to be. But when this ships, it ships to ASHRAE standards. The lower alarm is to the ASHRAE standard and the upper alarm is just a little bit above that. So you can go in and play with that if you want. You can set them more tightly or you can broaden them if you want. But when you do hot air containment, what you'll find is, is that there's no hot air running around your data center. Your hot spots are pretty much going to go away anyways.